Our next panel discussion is going to talk about prerequisites of honing skills and ensuring seamless adaptivity to workplace. Nurturing talent using the latest technologies and how the budding professionals can adjust and adapt to the ever-changing dynamics of the industry. We have a stellar panelist with us on talking about this topic. We have with us Maddie Amritkar, founder and CEO, glad you came. Megha Behel, Account Director, Hill & Knowlton Strategies. Vasundra Singh, Senior Vice President, Business and Strategies, Value 360. We were also going to have Ms. Ms. Taruna Gupta, Seasoned Com Communication Professional, but due to her ill health, she couldn't join us today, but we wish her a speedy recovery. And moderating this session is our very own from Exchange for Media, Shrabasti Malik. A very warm welcome to all of you. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Um, hi. A very warm welcome to uh, Mr. Amrutkar, Ms. Singh, and Ms. Bell. Wonderful to have you in this session at the E4M, PR, and COPCOM 30 under 30 uh, summit. The topic of the session is prerequisites of honing skills and ensuring seamless adaptivity to the workplace. And I would like to start my first question with uh, with the thought that every every industry requires skills that need honing, that need training to become more successful. So on this slide, what are the fundamental lessons that a budding professional, especially in the PR and corporate communication industry, should imbibe from the industry leaders? If I could start with uh, Ms. Singh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rabishti. And... Uh... A very warm good afternoon to everybody uh, here on the panel. Uh, and thank you, Exchange for Media, for, uh, you know, giving us this opportunity to be part of this, uh, you know, conversation. And uh, also a big hi to everybody who's joined virtually. Uh, so uh, coming to the first question, which is primarily, you know, what are some of the key lessons that, that budding professionals should imbibe from industry leaders? I have... Fundamentally, there are many things that that you know a budding professional uh, would learn and imbibe from you know industry leaders. But I'm just listing out um, you know uh, top four uh, key takeaways according to me. Uh, so first is learning never stops. Uh, you know, be it any level, and be it whether you are a you're a uh, you know intern or whether you reach the, you know, the the senior most position in your company. Now, all working or upcoming professional in this industry need to you know have a very keen eye and a very keen interest in learning, because that should be a constant thing. It, it's it's imperative uh, for them to understand that while you know you are working things around us are constantly changing it is constantly evolving and learning does not mean that you get a degree or or you're just getting a certificate course it can be just learning on the job itself and you know workplace demands con uh, competency according to me it does not necessarily need you know a degree so if we look at the industry as well as the media landscape it is it is undergoing a tremendous amount of change with with you know, there has been a burst of digital um, uh, you know, evolved with this changing dynamics, the chances that you may become irrelevant. From a media landscape perspective also, I mean, if we see, if we analyze when, when we were, uh, you know, starting off, it was a different kind of reporting that used to happen. There were very minimal platforms that were there. It was pretty much traditional. Um, it was almost like reporting facts. Today, with the advent of so many new platforms, um, it's, we're living almost in a clickbait kind of a world where everybody wants to break the news first. New media formats have emerged. You know, you have long analysis uh, content pr platforms like your morning context, um, like your Ken, uh, a lot of, um, of course, your traditional pro formats are there, your social media new pla news pl uh, platforms have emerged. So it's, it's changing very dynamically. But I think this changing dynamic is to the advantage of the professionals because you know, we were born in a very traditional um, setup and we had to migrate to learn the digital world. And but these guys have actually they have they 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 don't have to really migrate they have actually been born as digital first itself and um, they already know the digital world better than anybody else and so but even for them the scenarios is changing new words new new buzzwords like you know web 3.0 or uh, the revolution is happening metaverse is being spoken about so 
professionals have to be very aware of these changing industry and you know media uh, dynamics and know how to navigate and utilize them well so learning becomes a very very key enabler um second is i think from from um, second takeaway would be maintaining honesty with the client's team and focus on you know building an equation like a personal equation now if you look at the best industry leaders that would have emerged in in the last few years they would always they would always have the best relations with their clients now a lot of times um, you know young professionals are in awe of their clients and they they sometimes um very scared to even give real feedback or disagreeing with their point of view you know or just saying no that this can't be done now as pr professional right expectation setting with your client is also very important because if you don't and you agree to everything ultimately it will be you who will be like at the receiving end because you won't be able to deliver because uh, of expectations are mismatched right so at the at the onset it's very important to, that you know you you put your point of view across and later because even when they see the results no even if in initially there might be friction but when they see the result in their favor they are always going to appreciate the honesty and the right advice and that's exactly what you're there for um so idea is invest in turning your clients and you know the comms team of your on your clients time into extended teams work with them like partners it's it's a relationship and rapport that you form with the comms team that is going to matter the most in the long run like like relation in our personal life also and if you are able to do this well a lot of times it will be you know they will be pushing for you they'll be the ones who will root, root for you the hardest and at times you may even falter slightly they'll be the ones covering up for you even before their uh, you know bosses a uh, third takeaway for me is stability i think stability is the key to uh, attaining industry knowledge and eventually growing in your career now a lot of upcoming and budding professionals need to understand the importance of uh, you know building the right foundation learning and experience early on and you need to invest time if you have found a good organization which is providing you holistic development and the right opportunity invest time there and if you see any respected and good industry leader today or in the last you know 10 years one thing will be common thread that they would have been very stable and spent considerable time in in a particular organization before you know moving or uh, they would have invested good amount of time in learning initially also because it's important to grow not just monetarily it's also important to grow functionally and if you keep hopping from one place to the other um, you may get you may have monetary benefits initially but from a learning path in terms of understanding the real challenges of the industry in understanding the craft or, or the trade the the craft and the trade that will somewhere you will start lacking so stability is a key to attaining right knowledge which will eventually lead to uh, growth and success thank you ms singh thank you for your uh, opening words uh, ms behel i would like to come to you and uh, please share your ideas on the same that uh, how uh, these lessons should be uh, given to the budding professionals thank you so much uh, shabasti so first of all thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity and i kind of agree with uh, vasundhra i think uh, today's generation is kind of very well informed and uh, we all know that exposure levels that are given to them are much higher than most of us out here and uh, they are kind of more exposed to the digital world and they're just simply more connected in many ways possible and um, when they join an organization they come with a mindset that um, they want to do everything be it social traditional graphics content they would want to do they want they would want to explore everything however i think it is very important for us as leaders to kind of enable them to dissect their knowledge which they have learned from universities or colleges and uh, utilize that in a very right way and a right place and maybe sometimes that might even include guiding them to slow down a little bit take a pause think maybe take a step back and focus on certain key areas first and then move on to the next thing and uh, the second thing uh, which i can speak from my personal experience uh, from when i started my career uh, is basically people management and we all know that we are in the field of communication and even if it's it is any industry people management is something that is extremely important 
i remember when i was young i would just sometimes kind of speak my mind out but and i'm not saying uh, that it's wrong in any way but uh, we are in an industry wherein it is very important to kind of articulate the way you are communicating to both your peers maybe internal stakeholders as well as out, uh, external stakeholders and uh, of course uh, the skill comes with experience and uh, we as leaders i think we should we here we play a very important role in terms of guiding them to articulate before they kind of share their thoughts to the external media out there so yes i think these are some of the learnings from my younger days for people who are kind of starting their career in this industry thank you ms bhai for your points um so we are coming to the next question and before coming to the next question it's my kind request to all the panelists to keep your answers within 1 to 2 minutes just keep it crisp and short thank you so much so my next question is that how can agencies prepare young talent to celebrate successes and also learn from their failures i would like to start with mr amritkar uh sir you are muted so you are on mute okay thank you ruchika for your question uh, coming back to the first question i would like to say uh, what i feel is the three important lessons uh, for all the budding uh, you know talent is uh, the first one is time management because i feel time is an important asset and how because we just have so many hours in a day so how are you going to manage your time is i think going to be an important aspect for all the budding people a uh, second uh, what i feel is about having the right communication because communication you know having said that if you communicate things very clearly it's important for your clients or internal team so i feel communication plays an important role where you eventually decide what you have to basically do in life the third aspect what i feel is uh, take and learn from criticism because i see a lot of youths in the age bracket of 21 to 26 you know are uh, in the young generation out there the gen zs we call you know it's very difficult for them to adapt to the situation to handle stress and pressure at the time you know because this is what i've seen through my experience so i think uh, the message what i would like to give is to start taking because all 30 days are not going to be your days one day might be bad so you will have to learn from your mistakes and you know see how you basically eventually do better uh, the other message uh, basically i would like to say is how Oh, uh, yeah. You saying something? No, no. I was just agreeing to your point. Yeah. Please continue. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, the other thing is about uh, how we basically going to nurture the young talent is uh, what I feel because we of course are a six years old agency based in Bombay. What I feel is you know having the right culture, having the right mindset because we have our offsite trips every six months. You know, like we just went to Agadpuri last week. now our next trip is planned in goa so i think having that right culture will help uh, the people change their mindset because i see there is immense pressure everywhere you know if you're working in a bank or any other agency so i think you know for us for our we as an agency to ha- have the right talent is of course having a proper training process at the start you know if you see the it companies like accenture has a right uh, training module which i feel we as an agency are somewhere lacking because you know once a fresher joins in we just basically give them a normal training and we just get them to work so i feel a right training is required and you know we if we eventually try and create a right culture around us i think it will help eventually create more young talents and have a right stability I'm so sorry for my mistake. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Amrutkar, for your uh, words. Uh, Ms. Behel, what do you think uh, should the young talents should learn? Uh, how should they learn from their failures, and how can agencies prepare them to celebrate the successes as well? Um, I somewhere think that uh, everything boils down to the work culture of an organization. Uh, I have seen that we generally kind of reward a person when someone has achieved a milestone or has accomplished something big. But somewhere I believe it should be the person's work ethic and also efforts that uh, we need to acknowledge. Uh, just a pat on the back for trying or putting effort every day is in itself a success for youngsters. And trust me, it kind of goes a long way in motivating people and retaining them uh, in the organization. 
talking about failure i think i personally don't believe in this word failure and i always say this it's basically a learning experience uh, we need to kind of create a culture wherein people can make mistakes but as leaders we need to ensure that they kind of learn from their mistakes and come out even stronger and better and not demotivated so like i mentioned earlier it is not failures it's kind of a learning experience and i will just like to quote a phrase uh, that i recently read in an article by sundar pichai he stated that reward efforts and not outcomes and honestly that says a lot for me so i genuinely want to reward, uh, reward efforts and not outcomes definitely uh, missing uh, what what is your remark on the same um so i think i my 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 comment here would be that you know our industry when we look at you know celebrating success and we look at learning from failures i think this industry is a great leveler you may have you know done a great job on one day got a lot of accolades got a lot of client appreciation got a great story and the very next day you uh, you know it it's not a great day and you would have missed an opportunity or you would have missed a great story or or, uh, or anything so so the industry itself is a great level or every day you're learning that not to take either success or failure too seriously and i agree that you know the culture is very very important in in in, in enabling a you know a, a, an environment that can be motivating even if you make mistakes it's okay and i think from a success point of view what young professionals need to understand very critical is that it should not get to your head you may you may you know plan a great campaign but always remember that you know there are multiple hands and heads coming together as a team to make that possible so it's very very important that you understand the key roles that all team members have played and understand the power of teamwork when it comes to success when it comes to failure um, i think failure is the biggest opportunity to learn and uh, if you are able to just become systematic in your work create a checklist checklist is something that we tell our clients all the time we that's the first thing that we do for all our clients but try and do that for your own self also whenever things are going wrong build a checklist follow the process put processes in place and the chances of you you know going wrong in your approach will will be minimized if, uh, effectively in future so that would be my takeaway we so got just to add one line i think Definitely. i agree to megha as well what she mentioned i think small appreciations also make all this young talent feel because i have a 30 people team all are girls in my team and i just tell them oh you're looking nice today and say you made my day so i think a small appreciations you know in our stand up meetings every day i think we keep them motivated i think learning has to be there so i think just to add i think i agree ki what we have to do as a you know talents and how we can eventually train them rightly absolutely so, uh, we talk about uh, celebrating the success and learning from learning and relearning from failures and everything but uh, everybody knows that without risk nothing happens neither failure nor success so my next question is that why is it important for the young talent to take risks i would like to start with ms bell okay so i am going to be very candid about this here i don't think today's generation needs a push to kind of take take a risk they are already taking they are up for taking risks and i see this all the time in my organization and we have a high percentage of young employees uh, working with us and they are always up to take more risk they jump on opportunities they want to work on new business pitches they want to write content they want to also be a part of a content team they want to integrate in whatever way they can so and in fact they kind of also reach out to leaders mentors asking if if they can do something different than you and uh, i'll just say that quite that they're, they're quite fearless now uh, when it comes to actually taking risk and that is something that i genuinely respect uh, about them because they are all out they want everything so i think that's not a challenge for the young generation now definitely okay. mr so anupur i take this, this like question this. yeah i think yeah. i partly agree with uh, megha because of course i have a chunk of people who basically of course are there to learn i have a person who is doing content social media but i feel there are a lot of people who are still not able to overcome that risk and are still in their comfort zone 
So the message I would like to give them is, of course, you will have to overcome fears, you know, because if you say, oh, no, I can't do this. I see a lot of people going through mental stress, you know, of course, due to the COVID hit for two years. But the only thing I would like to say is not give up, because if you don't try, you will not understand. You know, that's how you learn from your mistakes. And that's what I keep on mentoring my team whenever someone is in trouble. I personally, even if there's an intern, I personally talk to them. Because we don't know how people go and how what's happening in their personal life. But I feel they basically have to eventually take that risk, come out of their comfort zone, try new things. I had one girl who had a stage fear and she started crying, oh, I can't do it. But I said, you will have to push. We as a boss, we'll have to eventually push you. Otherwise, you won't learn things. So I think the message would like is that you'll, of course, have to tackle your mind in that situation. Because, you know, it's, it's no one is going to tell. No parents are going to just tell and help. But it is you. You have to decide what you have to do. So I think it's just that they have to push themselves. We as leaders out here have to keep motivating them, give them surprises. That's how I think they'll be able to take that further step. Ms. Singh, what would you like to say on this? Um, no, I agree with the, the both of them. And I think um, I would like to just take a step back and, you know, um, in terms of more than why it is important for the young brigades to take risk, I think um, the pertinent question should be that how do we enable the young brigades to take risk, right? Because it is it is us as leaders uh, to build that environment. And the first and foremost thing is that you have to, along with giving them responsibility and the push, you have to also give them a sense of ownership. Casing, so a lot of times, um, you know, there is a culture in the company where, you know, everything is vested, the decision making is vested on one person or just the team leaders. Now, if I look at my current organization itself as a casing point, um, we work almost um, uh, uh, like individual business units, like every team leader is like an entrepreneur and within the unit, they are given the right of ownership, responsibility, freedom to take calls and decisions, right? you right from, you know, resource planning to building your team to, um, you know, MIS planning your top line, bottom line. And that trickle downs to even the junior level people and the mid-level people where not for everything you need the approval of, of, of your, of your senior most person. So I think that kind of, a um, you know, environment will, help them to start taking decisions from a very early stage, which will eventually help them also to take risk eventually. And the second important point in this is that also pushing the young professionals into creative and out of the box thinking from the start. So a lot of times when you're working on big mandates or big pitches or big campaigns, you're so bogged down by it that you only go to your best people, like your senior most people. But you forget that sometimes even the upcoming talent or the junior people an idea can come from anywhere, right? It, and sometimes it comes from the most and the least expected places. So the idea is that you recognize people who have a creative bent of mind and hone that talent well. You give them a framework, give them an understanding of how campaign planning works so that they are able to think within that framework and come back to you with, the, with ideas which can actually add value to, to the larger uh, client narrative. So... Um... Coming to the last question of the session, and also it can be considered as a concluding remark, remark for all the panelists. How can young professionals identify opportunities and leverage them? Mr. Amrutkar, please take over. Okay. Thank you, Chika. Okay, so I feel uh, the basic uh, thing of identifying is that you basically need to enjoy what you do. If you don't love what you do, then I think you're not at the right place. But I think the first important aspect for any young talent who's trying to make that career in PR has to that they have to enjoy. You know, to give my example, when I started my uh, you know journey with Archtuk and you know later I figured that what you know is what I want to do. When I used to go with my friends in the malls, I figured that fashion is what you know inclines me so that's how i basically now running a fashion pr agency so i think the first thing that and the other thing what i feel is of course you have to keep growing you know everything is a learning each day is a learning so you have to keep learning things do your research do your homework and that is what i tell my teammates as well that you have to keep your eyes instagram is there but you just have to take the points what campaigns are happening so i think you have the learning has to keep on going on so i think these are two important points what i feel that the young talent has to eventually keep in mind. Ms. Singh, what are your concluding remarks on this? 
Great. So uh, I, I like to share a very interesting, um, you know, conversation that I, so I was in Mumbai a couple of weeks back and I met this very senior Copcom head and of a very, very reputed MNC almost. And he was sharing his experience of how, you know, um, a lot of students today and a lot of students in mass comm, et cetera, are not looking at, you know, PR as a career option because he was visiting a, uh, uh, he was visiting a very um, reputed academic institute. And he said that, you know, Dean was sharing that how uh, in the entire mass comm, PR is the at the lowest end of the student's preference, you know, and that was something which was worrisome. So the idea first is, you know, for us, um, you know, uh, how can, young talent identify opportunity is one thing but firstly we need to identify and you know do pr almost for pr industry so that you know the young talent upcoming talent can start seeing the opportunities in the pr industry itself right coming to the existing um, set of um, um, you know um, um, as in professionals and what they need to do is firstly um, you know you need to do more than your job description so don't wait for an opportunity because then opportunity is there and it can and you just have to keep your eyes and ears open sometimes it can even mean going beyond your uh, existing KRA. Like I, I know a lot of people in, in my current organization also who've gone much beyond their KRA and they've done things which were not really expected out of them. But today that has helped them grow, uh, you know, professionally and they've actually become pillars of strength, pillars of this organization almost. So I'm saying go beyond your KRA. Don't stick to your, you know, job description. And second is be vigilant and be aware because you're a, you are a PR professional. So you need to be very aware of what is happening around you. And by being aware and knowing what's happening around you, you may open a new opportunity for you. You might be able to create something valuable from things that are changing around you. And you may be the first one actually to understand that category and turn it into an opportunity. So be aware and uh, you know of what is happening around you in terms of buzzwords, the new trends that are coming. Um, you know, And there are so many new formats. It's not just news. There, is, there are so many verified options for you to actually consume new uh, you know, content from and build up on your uh, industry knowledge. Ms. Bell, what are your concluding remarks? Honestly, I think uh, we it will be unfair if we kind of club it under one or two umbrella. It, it purely depends from person to person. Um, I think there are some who, who, who come with a clear direction and a clear mindset that what they want from an organization and what are their future goals going to be. Such young professionals, I think, should identify a mentor in the organization and kind of reach out to them, um, asking for suggestions on how they can enhance their skills and obviously how uh, they can reach kind of their growth. Whereas uh, there might be also a set who are not really clear to what they want from an organization or what direction should they go in. So for them too, I think it is very important to again identify a colleague or a mentor with whom they can discuss their interests, skills, areas of improvement, and maybe seek help to kind of outline a roadmap for their growth, keeping all these factors in, in mind. And overall, I think um, it is important for an organization to identify skills and interest areas of such kind of people and accordingly give them roles which is suited to uh, that particular person. Thank you so much, Ms. Bell. Thank you to all the panelists for joining here for us and uh, for having such an insightful conversation. I'm sure all the viewers have noted down the points that you discussed. And uh, thank you so much for joining. Over to you. Thank guys. you so much. Thank you. Thanks a ton. Have a good day, everybody.